So let's look at some improper integrals um, where we can actually sort of evaluate things directly, right? Um, so the idea is with, it, with an integral like this, or this, or, or even that, right? Um, the way you define an integral of the form, say, a to infinity, is you say, well, this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from a to b of fx dx, um, provided the limit exists. So we come to something like this, and we say, OK, let's do the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x squared dx. Right? So we get an antiderivative. This is x to the minus 2. So we get minus 1 over x evaluated from 1 to b. So that gives me 1 minus 1 over b. OK? All right. Well, that means that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx is the limit as b goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 over b, which is 1. Okay. It's all good. Okay. Now, what about this one? For this one, we do the integral from 1 to b, 1 over x dx. Okay. And, well, that gives me log x. Log is absolute value, but we're, we're working with positive numbers here. Log x from 1 to b. So I get the natural log of b. Well, minus the natural log of 1, but log of 1 is 0. OK. Um, so in this case, if we try to take the limit, right? So the limit as um, x, or I guess we could call it b. The limit is b. Goes to infinity of log b is infinite, right? So we don't get a finite value out for this one. Um, so what we say if the integral does not give us a finite value, uh, there's a word for that. We say that the integral diverges. Okay? So when we say that an improper integral diverges, we mean that we cannot get a finite value out um, like we do in this case here, right? Um, if you do get a finite value out, um, then you can say that the integral converges. Okay? So converges if, if you get a finite number, diverges otherwise. Okay? Now, for this one here, we have minus infinity for the lower limit, right? But it's the same idea. If you have, if you have infinity in the lower limit rather than the upper limit, you still define that improper integral as a limit where this time it will be the limit as the as the lower bound on your integral goes to minus infinity instead of the limit where the upper bound is going to plus infinity. Okay? So first thing we do is we evaluate the integral from a to 0 of e to the x dx. And of course, that gets us e to the x. We apply our bounds, a to 0, and that gives me 1 minus e to the a. Okay. All right. So then the limit from minus infinity to 0 of e to the x dx, well, it's the limit as a goes to minus infinity of 1 minus e to the a. And Remember that the exponential function, if you're going to minus in infinity, it heads down to 0. So we get a limit of 1. Okay, so that integral converges as well. All right. Now we come to this last one. 1 over 1 plus x squared. Now we, we, we already encountered this in the previous um, video. We saw that, of course, the antiderivative gives us arctan. And we saw that, you know, arctan as x goes to infinity, arctan approaches 
pi over 2. And of course, at the other end, uh, as we approach minus infinity, our can is going to approach minus pi over 2. Uh, the main thing that we need to kind of key on for this example is when both limits are infinite, you have to be a little bit careful with improper integrals where both limits are the same. Um, you don't necessarily want to treat things symmetrically. So you don't want to say, you know, this is the limit. So you'll sometimes find people do this. They'll say, well, maybe we write this as like the limit as, as a goes to infinity of the integral from minus a to a of 1 over 1 plus x squared um, dx. Uh, but this, this is not the right approach because, you know, when you're using sort of symmetric limits like this, sometimes there are simplica simplifications that happen that might obscure what's really going on, right? In particular, if you had an odd function, well, if you had an odd function, then maybe this in integral is just 0, and then you take the limit of 0, and you get an answer, but maybe that was not the right answer. Um, so this is, this is not how you want to do things. Uh, this does have a use. This does have a meaning. You'll find this in some contexts, um, even some physics contexts. This is sometimes known as principal value. And, and sometimes principal value can exist for an improper integral when the improper integral itself does not exist. All right. Now, it turns out that the right way to handle something like this, where you're going all the way from minus infinity to plus infinity, is you actually break this up into two pieces. So we'll do, you pick any intermediate point, zero is typically convenient, and you write this as the integral from minus infinity to zero of one over one plus x squared dx plus the integral from zero to infinity of one over one plus x squared dx, okay? And in order for this integral to converge, these two have to both converge and exist sort of independently. If, if both of these integrals converge to some finite value, you can add those values together to get the original integral. But you have to make sure that both of those exist on their own, all right? Um, now, you can go through and you can, you can check this and you can work things out and you find that um, you'll get a contribution of pi over 2 from this one you get a contribution of pi over 2 from that one. And, and so you do get, using arc tan as the antiderivative, you do indeed get pi over 2 plus pi over 2. Um, so you get a total value of pi for that integral. Um, but you do have to treat things with care. If both limits are sort of improper in this sense, then you need to split the integral into two pieces and deal with each piece separately.